Welcome back to the Mac Rumor Show. We have Hartley and we have Kevin the Tech Ninja for like the fourth time. I don't know. How long have you been on here, Kevin? <laughs> I feel uh, like you've been here quite I a think, bit. Yeah, I think four four is legit. I think that sounds about right. We'll just call you third host. That's fine. Uh, sure. Kevin, how you doing, buddy? Hartley, how you doing? Doing all right, man. Doing yeah. all right. Getting ready to stuff my face with some turkey here in America. Thanksgiving yeah. is uh, coming up soon, so. I don't know about Kevin, but I feel like everyone else here in the States, or we're all just kind of like, one foot towards that Thanksgiving dinner. By the time you guys listen sure. to this, it'll be it'll be Black Friday, so we'll be out doing Ooh. the crazy holiday shopping. I might body check somebody into a, into the line for like an iPad or something. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> uh, but before we before we do all of that, we need to talk about uh, our main topic, which is the uh, iPhone 16, because we're just not happy enough with the new one that we just got two months ago. We need to look ahead. That's what we do, right? How excited are you on a scale of one to ten for the iPhone 16? We'll start with Kevin. <laughs> uh, like one, I'm still enjoying. I'm enjoying the 15 <laughs> a lot, and uh, you know me, I don't look into rumors and stuff. And this is the Mac Rumors show, so I feel like a, a horrible. You're guest the perfect it. guest. You're the uh, perfect yeah. Guest. So it's just I don't know. It's too too soon, but I I do know there's like the, the release cycles, right? I, I do know they're always working on the next one while the while the current one is is just coming out. So I, I already know that. That whole meal is, is churning. So um, I, I, well, I am excited to kind of see what's coming out with, with it, though. I, I do want to, I love technology, so I'm always excited about what's coming next. I mean, you are the tech ninja, so you have to be excited. We are, uh, we're going to go through a list of all the features, but Harley, what, what about you? What, what's your level of excitement for next year? Well, I kind of have mixed feelings because I am not very happy about two of the changes that are rumored for the iPhone 16 lineup, um, which if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you'll know what they are. Um, but at the same time, I'm always intrigued to see what Apple is doing. Um, and I feel like the iPhone 15 Pro was such a good upgrade that I'm really interested to see where things go after that, other than in these two specific areas that I'm a little bit uh, disappointed about. Well, we have a list of features, and so we're going to run through them, and we'll get everybody's thoughts on each one. Uh, but my guess is we'll start with number one, and that's probably one of the ones that you're not thrilled about, and that is the fact that uh, we are expecting larger displays for the 16 Pro and the Pro Max. So uh, they are now expected to go up to 6.3 and 6.9 inches, respectively. So that's basically a two-inch increase um from the last 6.1 and 6.7 inch models that we have 0. now 2. so what's that 0. 0.2 inches what did i say 2 inches no 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 we're going to we're going to 8 inches <laughs> 8. <laughs> 8.1 and 8.7 sorry 0. 0.2 inches my bad thanks for the uh thanks for the heads up there but uh what are your thoughts on that hartley since i i, I mean we already know what it is you're not happy yeah i, I just i uh I really like the size of the iPhone 15 Pro. Um, I always was a big fan of the size of the iPhone 11 Pro. I always choose the smaller device. Um, and I feel like if you like a big screened iPhone, um, then this isn't so much of a concern for you. But I feel like people who are fans of small iPhones have had a lot of bad luck. I mean, the mini is gone. Um, that that perfect size that we had, which was like the 5.8 inch through the iPhone 10 to the iPhone 11 Pro, that's also gone. Um, and now we've just managed to get the bezels reduced. We've just got that smaller frame on the iPhone 15 Pro, and it's already going away only around for one year. So I'm not too thrilled about that. I would have, it would have made kind of more sense to me going uh, and sticking with the 6.1 inch. And then if they want to make a bigger device, then do that with the Pro Max or bring a new size in above the Pro Max. But not too thrilled with the idea of moving both devices up. What do you think, Kevin? Yeah, I'm with you on I'm with you on that Hartley. Uh the, you know, I do like the smaller size iPhone. I do like the iPhone Pro. Um now typically I do gravitate towards the Pro Max just for the the better battery life, but if battery life was exactly the same, I would always go with just the standard Pro model. And, you know, just like you said, there's people who want the smaller phone and they're saying the phones are getting too big and now they're making the phones even bigger. And that would have been interesting if there would have been like a Pro Max Plus or a Pro Max Extra or something like that, that would give people that 6.9 inch. Because, you know, right now the 6.7, in my opinion, it is, especially once you put a case on it, it starts to push the limits of of the usability of a phone. And even me, as a person with larger hands, I still kind of struggle with the phone a little bit. Like it is definitely a two-handed phone at all times and becomes a little bit cumbersome to use. Um, 
So yeah, that's that's a very interesting choice. I'm I'm actually very surprised by that, to, to be quite honest. And I think there's actually two main reasons why they're making this change, because I think it is a little bit risky in that regard. I can't imagine that many people are going to be thrilled to have uh, a, a size increase from these uh, existing sizes. Um, and I think that there are two reasons for that. The first is battery life, because we know that particularly with the smaller model, um, the battery life has not been great for a long time. And really the only way they can improve that battery life is just by making the device bigger. Um, the Pro Max has a great battery life. So the only way they can bring that to the smaller model is by making the smaller model bigger. It's, it's, it's all a bit of a trickery, um, really, I suppose. And the other reason is one of the other features which we'll talk about is the periscope camera. Um, coming to the smaller model because they need more internal space uh, for these components. So again, the only way you're going to get that is by making the device bigger. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, is it going to be that noticeable? I mean, I guess it might be a little bit, but I don't know. I, I feel like if if the 6.3 inch one could uh, increase the battery to like be remotely close to the Pro Max, I feel like that might be the perfect the perfect model. As long as the footprint think... stays the same-ish, maybe it's going to have to accommodate a little bit for that exercise. But like, I don't know, really, like what you guys said, the Pro size is a good size right now. It's just the battery life is not yeah. anywhere near. So can you see people moving down from exist the existing Pro Max to the, the standard size Pro at this 6.3 inch size? I feel like people just like big, big phones. <laughs> I feel yeah. like people just yeah. like big phones. And they're gonna buy it anyways, and they won't even know. They're not gonna know the difference, unless Apple's really kick it in to high gear with its marketing for that, or it's like it's even bigger now. Like if they don't mention <laughs> yeah. if they don't mention it don't at know. all in any promo, the average consumer isn't gonna know. Oh well, the last Pro Max was six point seven yeah, inches. Oh, this is six point. They won't know. I don't think it'll. Yeah, matter. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I yeah, you're right about that, Dan. I don't, I don't think Apple's going to go out and, and talk about how much bigger it is or anything like that because that's not really what they do. And people, some people just say, "I want the biggest phone." Like, I, I want the biggest iPhone. And I remember for a while, people went to Samsung and, and bought the Note just because it was the biggest phone available at the time, and, and that was like the calling card. Like, I want the most ex biggest phone I could possibly fit in my in my pants. Like that that was that was sort of a thing for people. <laughs> the and, Note and, phones were so good, by the way. Yeah, they they the, were the, I, the OG like the Note three that was yeah, my first remember, one that yeah. was so good. Anyways, I guess I guess my my weird question is why can't they make phones a little bit thicker to account for space? Like why why do they have to make the phones like so much taller? Like I I don't think there's anyone saying like yo I'm getting this phone because how thin it is. Like I, I've never heard a person say that. And I think if they increase the size a little bit to to allow for a little bit larger battery. I think people would enjoy that trade-off, in, in my opinion, because even Apple employees, you see them walking around with with you know with with MagSafe battery banks in the back of their phone, and that's just kind of to me, that's kind of ridiculous that everyone has the same complaint about the iPhone as far as battery life. Even with the Pro Max, for me, like I have to account for battery life throughout the day. I'm I'm telling myself that I'm going to be out all day. Let me make sure my battery bank is charged up, and that's kind of a bad experience because one more thing you have to like account for when when trying to use your device. This episode of The Mac Rumor Show is sponsored by Notion. If you're like me, you probably already know just how incredible of an app Notion is. But for those who are unaware, let me tell you that you can really manage every aspect of your life, whether it be for work or personal, inside of Notion. So I was excited to learn that they've already launched a new AI tool called Q&A. And it's like a personal assistant that responds in seconds with exactly what you need right in your doc. I just used it the other day and asked it to find all of the scripts that I have written over the last few years that contain specific keywords, as well as asking what work I should prioritize for this upcoming week. Notion AI can now give you instant answers to your questions using information from across your wiki, projects, docs, and meeting notes. Have an urgent question you'd normally turn to a coworker to answer? Just ask Q&A instead. It'll search through thousands of documents in seconds and answer your question in clear language, no matter how large or complex your workspace is. You can also ask Q&A questions from anywhere in Notion, so you can find exactly what you need without leaving the doc you're in right now and stay focused on what's important. Plus, you can trust your data is secure because Notion AI is designed to protect your information. No AI models are trained with your information. The data is encrypted and answers will never use information from pages you don't have access to. When you use Notion AI, it's even easier to do your most meaningful work. 
Try Notion AI for free when you go to Notion.com slash MacRumors. That's again, Notion.com slash MacRumors to try the powerful, easy to use Notion AI today. And when you use our link, you're supporting our show. So that's Notion.com slash MacRumors. Thanks Notion for sponsoring this episode. What's the size of the battery in the iPhone 15 Pro? Is it like over, it's not over 4,000, right? The standard Pro? No. It's like un- it's in the threes. Okay. And I think the, what's the size of the MagSafe battery pack? Is that a thousand or is that 3000? Honestly, don't know. Okay. Well, I think let's just say, yeah, I think it's, let's just I think say it's like 35 or something. Yeah. That's what I thought. So let's just say for the sake of this, this thought here, it's 35 on the phone and 35 for the battery pack. You know, you, you and, and many people, like you said, are walking around with that thing. Would you just buy an iPhone that had that, size of a like thickness on a regular basis but it gave you a seven thousand milliamp hour battery so basically double the battery life not that thick no but what well, if you well how do you expect you, them to do it well because when, when you have well because when you have that thing it has to count for more it has to count for another charging port and and it has to account for the casing like that that's not just raw battery you know what i mean so i think well if, you're gonna you're still gonna need to extend the case like let's just say this that's what it looked like you wouldn't buy that well, okay. Personally, I I probably would, but most people would not, because I mean, I remember back in the day, I would buy those phone cases with the, the battery Mophie attached cases. to it. The Mophie, Mophie case. cases, yeah. I yeah. I used to yeah. do those, like like whatever, like because yeah. for me, my phone is my work. Like that is my job to be connected, and, and and I have to, and and I understand my workload, my use case is extremely different than most people. Most people are not shooting four K sixty frames per second, fifty clips in a day. Most people are not doing that. Like I, I am hyper yeah. aware of that. What you, would you say? I said they're not. <laughs> no, 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 they're not. Right. So I'm, I'm, I am hyper aware of that. Um, but you know, I think most consumers, if you can get an extra two hours of battery life by adding two millimeters of thickness, I don't know, I don't know the ratio. Forgive me, I don't know the ratio. But if you can add a couple millimeters of thickness, and you can say we extended the battery life by an hour and a half, make the phone easier to hold. Like, like you know, Apple's the king of of messaging, right? If they can have yeah. some type of messaging, but yet extend battery life or not even talk about how the phone being thicker. Like you won't even notice it just like the screen size you said, you know, and you could just promote more battery life. I think there's two things on that point, which is the first is that Apple has been doing that for a while and making their devices thicker, but it hasn't been translating into better battery life generally. So I believe that every iPhone model since the iPhone six. So starting with the six S has been thicker or the same size as the one that came before. Um, and the 15 Pro is the thickest of all of them. I think it's something like 8.5 millimeters. Um, and I think the 16 models are due to be the same. And I think Apple's concern about m- making them thicker is that the devices are always getting wider and taller because the, the market is driving toward larger screens. So if you want something that's thicker and chunkier, um, it works better for for grip and and the feel in your hand if it's a smaller device. Like if it's an iPhone 5 um, size device, but it was half an inch thick, um, then that would be really easy to hold. But if you're talking about uh, an iPhone 15 Pro size device, or even with this rumored 16 Pro size, that is really large to have that amount of thickness. So I guess that their worry is um, to add that thickness and the, the size as well. And of course, that is going to add a lot of weight. So I think they're probably trying to balance all of these concerns. And maybe that that's kind of what they're trying to do with these 16 models is kind of rebalance stuff um, and rebalance screen size to battery life. But I don't know how much it's going to make a difference until we really get a, a breakthrough with the actual battery technology itself. Yeah, I mean, so a couple other things on this list, um, you know, as we're getting into it, it all just makes sense. So there's the stacked battery technology and the new thermal design that all kind of plays hand in hand with what we're going with here. So, um, is any of that particularly interesting to you guys moving forward on the iPhone 16s? There's some leaked pictures apparently that's, uh, of the batteries. And I mean, it's interesting insofar as obviously there were, um, issues with the iPhone 15 pro. Um, and overheating and although apple said it's been rectified uh with a software update it has, it has been better it, we don't know though how they've done that and what specific issues have led to that because 
um, Ming Chi Kuo believed that that was a, a hardware issue, and so we don't know mm -hmm. if maybe they've curtailed performance a little bit in some areas uh, or under certain circumstances um, to achieve that. So, in changing the heat sink and in changing uh, the uh, battery casing, the hope is that that will actually make some more substantial differences toward um, how hot the device gets. But yeah. I mean, I'm pleased to see any sort of differences with a battery. The, it's it's a kind of boring thing to get this first image of it. It's just this battery. But you can really see the difference if you look at it next to the existing battery because the casing is completely different. It's gone from black foil um, to this really sort of polished um, metal casing. Um, so, you know, these are all important internal changes. They're just uh, not that exciting. Yeah. Well, uh I was gonna say as long as we get better battery life and batteries last longer, yeah, battery health. That's I, all that matters. I don't care how they do it. I, I don't. I don't care how they do it. You know, I'm not taking the phone apart. I'm not studying it. So yeah, uh, as long as the result is pretty good, I'm I'm all right with it. All right. Well, let's get into something that is more exciting, or I don't know if it's exciting, but it's intriguing. It's weird. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But the capture button, not the action button, that'll apparently still be there. But there's going to be a new extra button. And uh, yeah, I mean, my first thought capture, I thought camera, but apparently that's not, I mean, we don't really know, but the rumors are pointing that maybe that's not the case and that it might have something to do with like Siri and its new AI features or, you know, some, I have no idea, but what do you guys feel or how do you guys feel about a new button that could be used for something specifically, you know, to launch into something or whatever it could be, even though we already have the action button, Kevin? you yeah i was gonna say that uh it feels like a lot of people uh a lot of people set up with the action button is already set to one thing already and they sort of just not mess with it and that was designed to launch into different things so um you know adding more buttons to the phone i don't think that's i don't know i think that's gonna be sort of weird Ho hopefully it's not in a way that's intrusive where, where your hand naturally rests and it's not something you're accidentally pressing I would love for it to be a dedicated camera button because they, they are pushing cameras so much and maybe put that on the pro model only um, just because like getting into the camera and shooting something and, and things like that, that would be very helpful. But if it's something to launch right into Siri and you can't remap it, um, it really feels like a Bixby button to me at the end of the day. Yeah, Kevin raises a good point about that. We talked about this a little bit last week and I really don't know what that button is for, but um Kevin, when you mention about if it gets in the way this button, I actually think maybe it will because it's supposed to be um, on the bottom right hand side of the device. So that's yeah. right where you're gripping it a lot of the time. It's not like the action button where it's tucked up at the top. This is actually mm. at the bottom. So I don't know how that isn't going to get in the way. Um, it's really interesting, this rumor, because the the actual terminology of capture button, that isn't, say, coming from Chinese social media, and that is a translation. That is specific. That wording is, um, of course, it can change. It doesn't mean it's a marketing name. It doesn't mean that that's going to be what Apple calls it. But that is apparently what Apple is calling it inside right now, is this hmm. capture button. So that that must be for a reason, and we can read into that wording, but... I mean, camera well, is the only thing that makes sense, really. Camera, yeah, and, and Siri, AI, I don't know. It's, it's something no, in that area. Well, like capture, you know, there's been a lot of talk about like the capture mode or capturing in Vision Pro. Like, could that be related to that where it's, you know, launching into like a spatial video maybe? I, I don't know. That'd be that'd be very hyper a very hyper-specific button yeah, for right. a right. very small number of people that would have something. That'd be... That's true. Oof. That doesn't make any that'd sense. Be, no, I mean, but but it could happen, right? I mean, capture because you know, at, you know, when, when I hear capture, I do think of camera, I think of Vision Pro, I think of spatial video, and and and, and all those things like sort of next level things. But until Vision Pro is a everyday household item, I think having a button dedicated to Vision Pro would be would be very weird to to be quite honest, especially if it's going to be in the bottom right hand side where I was just looking at my phone. I'm like, my hand is always there. But then also right. when, when you think about the camera, right? right this is like a shutter button right it, it does fit in the shutter mode so i wonder if it's like deactivated when your hands like this but then becomes active when you're you know when you're That's actually in the you know what i mean I, that I'm would just, be good that would be good I, yeah i'm just sort of wondering and it, it sort of leads us i don't want to take over the 
take over the show, but it sort of does lead us into oh, solid state buttons, buddy, right? You're the you're the guest. No, I'm just so, no, no, no. You know, go ahead, yeah, and lead I, us in. You you well, lead us in. You okay, lead us I will. The next, go okay. ahead. Okay, I'll but just I mean, sit back and relax. I get. You know. Hey, it's the holidays. Take some eggnog, hang out. Um, I will take but I mean, some time off. Yeah, I guess it does kind of lead into solid state buttons, then, right? Where if that is a solid state button at that point, then maybe it will just be a deactivated thing that you don't that you don't really think about. Um, maybe it's a small hump and sort of there or whatever, but then it becomes active when you're in the mode to capture. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if these two things will play in together or not. It, no, I think that makes perfect sense, actually. Yeah, it, it actually could be a capture button for maybe, maybe like you said, when you're on your normal home screen or whatever, that's not what it's for. It does not work. But when you're in a very specific app, um, maybe like in the journal app you want to capture a new journal entry or something like a voice memo or something maybe it, like that's when it gets used for that obviously we stated the things for the camera app um that's the only two examples that i thought of i have no idea what other <laughs> capturing type things you could do a specific uh mappable button makes sense right so if the if the action button is what you can choose um as a user across all environments effectively you can kind of customize it with shortcuts but wherever you are that action should work what if the capture button is what developers can choose so within their apps that is that is something that they can map so uh, across all of apple's app if you're in the camera app then sure it it, it, it does that but if you are in uh, notes it creates a new note if you're Damn, in messages that. You, it has a pinned conversation and it goes straight to that or it, it literally sends a message, and that's all it does when you're in the Messages app. But it, it has these actions a little bit like um, uh, Double Tap on the Apple Watch, where it's yeah. specific actions in each app. Um, I can see that. Yeah, I'm kind of, I, it's kind of making a little bit more sense to me. Now, yeah. Is, maybe we're way off base. I don't know. I mean, you Forgot know, I had as Double long Tap on my watch for a minute there. I had to test it out. <laughs> <laughs> as, as, as long as there's a way to turn that off or something like that, because you imagine if there's an app that you press that button and it, makes you leave a review for the app <laughs> oh god <laughs> it's, just, it's just something that's or like so does so something with your like instagram and it like captures yeah, a story like, or something and you're like yeah i don't know getting hot yeah, in the shower I, or something <laughs> like god, I, that'd be terrible i just think of apps develop app developers having access to a physical component of the phone that can like controlling a button you know as long as things yeah. are optionable and toggles i'm okay with it as long as you give me a choice to turn something off if, if it doesn't actually I, I, I don't want it to do right okay so are you gonna you want to lead us back into that solid state button conversation because uh you know that button like you said is a solid state button and then that would mean that maybe all of the buttons might turn into the solid state variety because we were supposed to get that this year and we did yeah so is next year the year next year's the year I think it's going to okay. happen. So solid state volume, power, and mute buttons on the pro models only. Kevin, so do you have a sort list of, of it, these features? Yeah. It sounds so like you have a list of these features. I have a list of these features. It's the it's right here. But uh, now 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 is that the same thing? Forgive me if I'm wrong, like the the touch the touchpad on the MacBook, that's considered a solid state, right? Is that is that sort of the yeah. same thing or or that be different? So yeah. So, so yeah, so it'll, it will be a button and you'll get some type of feedback, but that feedback would be like a digital, like, like a haptic feedback and not a physical button press. Right. But when I'm using the MacBook and I'm, and I'm pressing down on it, it does feel like I'm pressing down with that, with that feedback. It doesn't feel weird. Only time it, it feels weird is when the, when the MacBook is actually turned off and I'm pushing and nothing is moving. But for the most part, it, mm. it does feel good. Um, I do wonder though, when it comes to certain things like, for example, when you have to reset the device or the device is malfunctioning, since there is software in play instead of it being a physical hardware button, I wonder what would the hard the hard reset would be on that on that device. That's that's the thing I worry about when everything becomes so software reliant. What's the physical switch when hard when software is not responding to hardware? Yeah, I think that is the outlying concern, um, and I think that. There were obviously problems with this, right? Because Apple couldn't bring it to market in time for the iPhone 15 <clears throat> Pro. Um, I'd bet that was one of the concerns. Um, I am at this stage a little bit skeptical that we are actually going to get it. And I'm definitely skeptical that we are going to get it across all of the buttons. Um, I think if we do, 
it maybe is only going to be maybe this cap new capture button um or maybe the capture button and the action button or it will only be the volume buttons um i can't see all of the buttons going away right now because i think that some of those issues um that led to them being pulled out of the iphone 15 pro um are unresolved uh, but it definitely it was it, it should be neat because when we were having this discussion literally it must have been a year ago at this point we were wondering how is apple going to sell this because as you say kevin if there's no difference in terms of what you feel as a user why bother how how are you going to market it, that that's cost apple a huge amount of time an investment to be able to to do that and it is taking up a huge amount of space inside the device so it has got to serve some purpose um what was what would that be um does that mean you get uh, other than the fact that you can just choose how far it feels like it's depressing in settings, it's, it's got to be more than that. So uh, when we do get this, if we get this, uh, I'm interested what the unique selling point is for that. This episode of the Mac Rumor Show is also sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN is a VPN service or virtual private network that gives users safe and private access to the internet. By encrypting your connection, a VPN hides your IP and online activity from spying eyes and keeps your data safe from criminals. The biggest reason I use a VPN is to solve the problem of the man in the middle attack. This problem allows for Wi-Fi networks, especially those free public networks, to be easily compromised by criminals that can intercept your data, all without you even realizing this is happening. So, for example, you're browsing all the web. So, for example, you're browsing the web at your favorite local coffee shop. You sign on to Cafe Free Wi-Fi Network thinking that's the correct and safe network, but it turns out to be a fake network, and criminals will begin to harvest your sensitive data. NordVPN will encrypt your online traffic at all times, keeping those naughty fingers out of your personal data. It's incredibly easy to use. Users can connect with one click or enable auto connect for zero click protection. You can choose from 58 plus servers in 60 countries. VPNs are also kind of known to slow things down, but not NordVPN. You get amazing speed and NordVPN is one of the fastest out there. For you streaming junkies out there as well, you can access your favorite content anywhere, even if you're traveling abroad. If you're unaware, there's different content on streaming platforms in different countries. Netflix in the US might look totally different from Netflix in the UK. So if you want either one, you can just log on to your VPN and access that one. There are tons of benefits to having a VPN and NordVPN is my go-to VPN provider. So grab the NordVPN deal by heading over to nordvpn.com slash macrumors and get extra subscription time. Try it risk-free now with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring. Yeah, I mean, I I don't see the point in in it either, unless they were all like able to be remapped to something else or do different things. Otherwise, I mean, the buttons work fine. We've had buttons for many years. It's not we don't need to reinvent the button wheel here. It's just just keep it going. <laughs> it's fine. Um, no one no one's sitting there looking at their phone, being like, "Man, I wish these weren't real buttons," because I would just make this so much better. Like no no one no one's saying yeah. that, but. Also, I mean, if they do switch to them and all the kinks are worked out and they work fine, cool, I guess. It makes it like a sure. little more sleek and flush and, you know, I, I guess. I don't, how is it going to work with the case? I have no idea. Um, yeah. That's the button talk. Let's, uh, let's move on to the cameras. Everything that we're all excited about. Because we use, you know, I know Kevin, he just said he takes like a thousand videos a day. So, you know, we know you're using your camera. Hartley, you have very strong thoughts about the uh, telephoto lens. Do, do you have strong thoughts about the ultra wide lens now gaining 48 megapixels? Uh, yes, no, uh, in the sense that I am really pleased to see that 48 megapixel sensor coming to the other uh, lenses. It feels a, starting to feel a little bit overdue, maybe, um, because it is so good. Uh, the ability to take 48 megapixel photos. I really love the ability to do that. It was such a good feature introduced on the iPhone 14 Pro. It's a it's it's really good even on the uh, on the standard 15 and 15 plus now. Um, really compelling feature, something that almost everyone um, can take advantage of. Uh, but on the other hand, I never use the ultra wide. So personally, I I just don't particularly care if the ultra wide vanished. Um, I don't really think about it on the one or two days of the year that I actually remember to use that lens, but it's good to, it, it makes sense. It is a sensible upgrade. What about you, Kevin? Do you use the ultra wide a lot? 
Yeah, I really don't use the ultra wide a ton just because there's a dramatic quality drop off when I switch to it, especially if it's less than optimal lighting. So it's one of those yeah, things so that will <clears throat> go ahead. I was gonna say, so now if it's if it does have a big boost in quality, yeah. would you use it more? Yeah. yeah, I can see myself using it. Um just when I'm trying to capture something large, like if I'm visiting a cool place and I have like a really cool angle to look at something, but I do find myself using 2x and 5x a whole lot more than ultra wide, just in general, just to get that just to get a different perspective. Um, you know, ultra wide is kind of cool to have and it's sort of like it's expected to have it, especially at a phone at this price. And and I really don't want to be removing features, especially as the price goes up, but, you know, kind of bring it up to snuff and kind of, you know, get it on this generation of camera as far as quality wise that I don't see any drawbacks behind that. And I, I think it's, I think it's overdue to be honest. What I think it would be useful is that if it does get this bump in quality, take all, all of your landscapes in ultra wide and then crop in to what you think is the better like look and like setup of the shot because then you have you know tons of space to work with you're not worrying about framing in the in the moment like oh is this an, is there enough on you know fix fix that later and you won't lose any quality um in in theory i mean there just shouldn't be a dramatic drop off in quality I think that's a great point yeah i think cropping is the real potential of this this yeah. sensor and that's where to someone like me that doesn't like the the look of the ultra wide me neither sorts of shots perfect uh, if i can just crop in and choose what i like the look of mm -hmm. that's you know I, I think a lot of people don't want to do that so that might be more of a pro feature kind of thing um but yeah i just think that that's what that's the most useful for in my opinion now the telephoto lens on the other hand hartley you hated when they went from 3x to 5x what about if we go from like 5x to 10x who's going to be mad then or is it going to be we get 5x and we get 10x, which is what I'm thinking is going to be the case, right? They're not going to just replace. 10x is way, way too big to be just the only option. I don't see how they could keep 5x. I don't know how, how that would work if they if they are upgrading the extent of the zoom because you can't crop out. You can only crop in. So how does Samsung do it? Don't they have a normal like 3x and then a 10x, and they call them both optical? Do they have I a fourth camera? I don't know about Samsung. I don't know about Samsung. They might actually but... have a fourth camera, don't they, Kevin? I'm I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think about it. I'm trying to think how or they do it. Or am I just it. making? Uh, I don't I think they had. No, they Look have. Keep, keep it rolling. Standard. <laughs> yeah. Uh. None of you guys are keeping it rolling here. <laughs> oh, I thought. Sorry, I, I thought you were talking. Sorry. Uh, no, I I don't know off the off the hand. And Samsung does a lot of trickery with digital and optical, and they kind of blend those two words together sometimes as well. So, I no, wonder... they have quad cameras. Quad cameras. Oh, they do so have. The four, they do have the four cameras. Okay. So, so there's a periscope telephoto at 10x optical, and then uh, there's a 3x optical, and then there's the ultra wide and the 200 megapixel main sensor so okay let me take that back you're right that makes way more sense we need to have four cameras so just get put four cameras on there that's fine let's throw, like, throw, on the, throw another camera on there why not yeah who cares eventually eventually we're bound to get a fourth camera but that's why i'm not sure about this with the iPhone. oh then i hate this idea i'm like you now i don't want to go 5x <laughs> is great the 5x camera was great i don't want to move past that well, this is this is the thing. So it's going to be that the standard models, uh, the, the the standard size models, I should say. So we've got the uh, what will be the iPhone 16 Pro. That is also going to get the periscope camera, but that is going to get the 5x. So in the same oh, way no. that you get these camera features trickling down, it's going to be at the top end with the Pro Max, where that optical zoom may be enhanced further. So presumably, then it will be with the 17 Pro that that comes down again. So I think our issues with this uh, upgrade are going to be a little bit different, but 10x, I mean, how far away have you got to stand for that to get a decent portrait? <laughs> well, that's the thing. You're not using it for portraits at that point. There will have to be some sort of software camera. Well, I guess I would say, that's... you know, use use the cropped 2x on the, on the main sensor, but it just doesn't look the same. It just doesn't. No, and that's. I know you hate it because you keep saying how far back do you have to stand with the 5X, which honestly, it's really not that far back. It's, but yeah, it's not. but it, it, the, the pictures, the, the, the hardware um, used for that to make portraits just looks so good. 
10 X. Now that is something you're going to have to stand pretty friggin' far back. So I don't think you're going to be doing that. Um, yeah, I mean that, that, that would be a bummer. And I, I, you know, this was on the list as like a quote unquote upgrade or feature, but there's the rumored fourth phone or fifth phone coming to this. That is the ultra. Do you think that's something that would be reserved for the ultra instead? It makes sense if it was, uh, yeah. I don't know whether we're actually going to get the ultra this year. Um, I think that, well, that it's on the list, was, Hartley. <laughs> it, it, it's on the list. Cause it was discussed. Do you remember when there were all of those rumors about, oh, uh, yeah. uh, changing the name of the pro max to the ultra and yeah. then it became uh that the uh that it would instead be a new model above it which makes sense because that's what it is for the apple watch right you've got two different apple right. watch sizes and then you've got this completely different thing with a completely different set of features with a different design and that is what the ultra is um even to some extent you could say that about the the chips i i, I know that the ultra is just two max chips glued together but the capabilities are different so if you have an ultra device it has got to have fundamentally a different camera a different display and a different design um i don't know if we're going to get that this year that's quite a yeah. lot um to be offering and we haven't really heard anything else about it we're here i mean look we've got like 17 features now for the iphone um 16 and 16 pro do we have anything about an ultra no so that kind of tells me that we're not getting it this year it's just weird to even add a fifth phone i i think it personally just makes sense to get rid of the pro max rename it to the ultra especially if you're going bigger in these sizes too like just make the yeah. Pro what the Pro Max would be in terms of the <clears throat> features that it gets, and then make the Ultra the one that just goes above and beyond for everything else. I don't think we need a fifth phone. If you're going to add a fifth phone, it better be a mini phone. Mini, yeah. But I, I sort of feel like Mini has this cult following, but when they actually sold the Mini, it was... It, yeah, they didn't sell horribly. any. <laughs> but everyone's like, I bring back the Mini. Like every, Everyone's so pumped about this Mini thing, but I think it's just the internet internet cult thing like i want the mini back but then no one's gonna buy it actually actually so I, but it's got to be a pro mini it's got to be a pro, pro mini. yeah but, see that's the thing there's there's two maybe, sides to this argument we'll which is the the i think that the reason why people didn't buy the mini um is because the people that want a cheap smartphone at the mini's price point they actually want a big device um, and that is why Apple has moved to offering a, a plus size device. Whereas the people that were actually calling for a mini in the tech community, these are people that buy pro size devices. And it wasn't that long ago. Say, look at the iPhone 11 lineup. The smaller iPhone 11 Pro was smaller than the standard model, um, which was the iPhone, uh, just standard iPhone 11. So Apple has kind of done this kind of thing before. Uh, I think it worked way better. But at the same time, uh, I disagree, Dan. I think that from a business perspective, it makes perfect sense to offer a model above that. Because just like we were saying before, there are people that just walk into an Apple store and say, I want the biggest, best phone. So if Apple can now get $2,000 out of those customers, why not um, just offer something yeah. even better? Yeah. And then you just trickle the features down. Um, makes sense. A bit like with the Apple Watch Ultra. Give the display of the Apple Watch Ultra um, one to the series nine and then upgrade the ultra series two's display that's basically what they're doing with that so do that with an ultra iphone i mean i don't like it necessarily but i can from business perspective that is what makes sense Blech. i don't like it <laughs> just i don't like i don't like it. it's too much it waters down it convolutes everything i just don't like yeah it. that's true that's true it's just it, but you know whatever I, I don't like that. I'm not one of those people who is like, I don't like it. So I'm going to make this my entire personality and, and be mad against the people that do like it. Like, I just don't have to buy it. No one's putting anything to my head and saying, dude, buy this. And it's like, yeah, you're right. Just, just, you know, piss off and let everybody else do what they want to do. It's basically what you got to do. Yeah. Um, but Kat, I was going to say, but, but I was saying, but let's be honest. Oh? If, if it, if it did come out, you, you would use that phone as your phone every single day. So which one? The ultra? the ultra, yeah, the ultra. Oh yeah, you'd absolutely. Get... Okay <laughs> then, you'll be you'll be the I'll one be taking, using it. I'll be taking portraits like six thousand feet away. It'll be fine. I'll have to use a hey, megaphone to d direct people on where to stand. There you go. You, you, yeah. You'll you'll find you'll find a reason. 
guys, it's my it's my job. That's the oh, excuse yeah. I'm going with. It's my job. Yeah, it's my job. Oh, it's, I have to is it not your is it not your job to to For sure. For sure. It is my job, but also what what MacBook do I use? Oh, you well well well. I use the M1 Pro, uh, so you know it is, it is my job. To that's have, because you, you know. don't want to buy another MacBook. You're just using the review <laughs> units, which is smart. Yeah, which is which is you. smart. I hear you. I just feel like it's not mine then, and then I can't like really take advantage of you know. That's just how I feel about that. But okay, cool. Um, let's see what else is on this list. So there's like a lot of internal upgrades. I don't know. Um. 5g advanced and wi-fi 7 like does that what what are, what are the main advantages for those two that like you could be like oh you know what that would be huge and people would like that i still think 5g is a scam <laughs> yeah feel like it's, it's such um, a scam it doesn't do anything for me in my real world like life yeah so yeah 5, 5g has been a, a big letdown because it was supposed to be this whole thing that changes the way you know, yeah. it speeds faster than your home internet. And you go to this one specific park mm-hmm. on one specific mm-hmm. day and you can get these crazy speeds, but in real life scenarios, you, you don't get that day to day. Right. And it's to the point where if you have like one or two bars for 5g, you know, at, at the end of the day, those speeds are slower than what you're currently getting with 5g turned off day to day. Right. So like I usually, I turn 5g off for better battery life. And, that, and that's, that's a big disappointment. They, I don't know how much money was put in for infrastructure for 5G, but it has been an utter failure. Any, any way you look at it, any way you look at it, it's I, yeah, it's it, it's just it's just in the wrong spots. Now I will say, at like crowded arenas and stadiums, that yes, has stadiums, made yeah. the experience a lot better. For sure, um, but for the most part, like the park, like you said, or like on this random street corner, how often are you de- Like, I remember when we did, I, I, I did like a, you know, like a 5g initial walkthrough um, with a company and they told me like, here are the very specific spots in this city that yeah, you should very, go to. Very specific. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm like, I'm downloading Amazon prime videos in like, like two seconds. And I'm like, yeah, that's sure. cool. That's cool. How often am I pulling off on this block up against this wall next hey. to a subway like, like hey, downloading I to, videos. Like, hey, I need, I, I'm not. I need to Put upload a YouTube airport. video. I need to upload. I need to upload a YouTube video. Let me drive. Let me drive fifteen minutes yeah. to the street to make sure I can get it uploaded. Um, Put it yes. at a freaking airport where I'm down. Where I want to download something before my but, flight, and it's taking forever. But but here's the thing that that becomes that puts it on the consumer at that point to understand where they need to be at a certain time to to actually utilize this feature. And most features that are really good are features that you don't know you're using. You just have a better experience using the phone. So we talk about Wi-Fi 7. Sure, Wi-Fi 7 is super fast. I've seen demos. I've seen it set up. I've seen it working. But you need a Wi-Fi 7 router, which is like $600 now. Like the price is extreme. Mm -hmm. And you you have to even have that type of speed coming into your house to even take advantage of those things. So it's a lot of things that needs to happen for this to to work. But I'm not going to poo-poo lack of a better term, I guess. I'm, I'm not going to like talk, talk like poorly about, about new features coming out because like when you are paying this money, much money for a device, you want some type of future proofing built into it. Oh yeah. Especially if you want to keep this device for a couple of years. So Wi-Fi seven, yeah, sure. Throw it on there and maybe I'll have a Wi-Fi seven router in the next couple of years and then I can utilize it, but it's not something I'm going to buy a device for, but uh, I, I am happy for new features and, and, and new technology being put into these devices. Now, Hartley, as someone who has notoriously bad internet, you should be all about Wi-Fi 7, jumping on that Wi-Fi 7 router, but I think it's more so your infrastructure and the, the offerings that you have than it is the equipment. But uh, yeah. do you, well, do, is 5G also in the UK? Sorry for a really dumb question, but like <laughs> we're very yeah, central like America here. We're like focusing only on ourselves. I don't even know what the rest like, of the world uh, has. Medieval times. Yeah, we, <laughs> I'm not saying we... that. I just know that like the rollout initially was not to everyone. So like, did you guys have five G though? That's good. Yeah. Okay, and that's my okay. experience. It's just pretty much the same just... as four G, except in some yeah. isolated areas. But of course, we don't get millimeter wave five G. We still don't have it. Okay, see. Um, so it's that no, you're not missing anything. Don't have. Um, but, <laughs> you're not missing anything. Yeah. So for the rest of the world, um, the five G experience is even more kind of lackluster because we don't have that experience of going to a sports stadium and 
even being able to see those crazy speeds they're just not they're just not possible on our devices that we actually receive it's not even the speeds that i care about it's just like oh i can actually use my phone because for the longest time um you know i have season tickets to the i'm pointing out this way because i'm literally looking at the brown stadium so like it's right outside my window i there every sunday that there's a home game and for the longest time i could not send a text i could not look up you know fantasy scores on my phone like i couldn't do anything and the stadium just got wi-fi that was halfway decent for the entire like you know people that are there a couple of years ago so for the longest time i'm like i i'll talk to you when i get out of the game like i can't tell anyone like what's going on or you know if i'm even okay like that's not that's not good so now it's at least usable and like i don't have to be on the public wi-fi if i don't want to and i can get away with 5g and it actually works pretty well so that's good but like i just feel like we need it in more places that make more sense like that airport like i said that to me makes more sense but like how does that in interfere with the planes and all that probably not a good idea you know that that's more important but i don't know there's got to be a way yeah and i guess there's nothing apple can really do about that right so they can put the no it's not their there problem with no, no. <laughs> wi-fi 7 and they can put yeah. this there with five uh with uh 5g but can <clears throat> can we really take advantage of it? It's not really their problem. I mean, I wish they would still offer airports and then they could say to us, well, here's a Wi-Fi 7 airport. And then you've got, mm -hmm. I mean, airport like yeah, airport, yeah. not what you're saying, Dan. Um, but <laughs> uh, well, well, hold on a second. So kind of piggybacking off of this, it's not directly related to the iPhone 16, but it is intriguing. So this 5G advance is going to be using um, Qualcomm, or it could be using Qualcomm Snapdragon X75 modem. But there have been talks about Apple creating its own proprietary thing so that they're not reliant on uh, third-party manufacturers for the modems. In which case, then I just recently saw that there is a report that now that might actually come into a Mac in 2028, which <laughs> many thoughts there. Why do we have to wait until 2028? And... I mean, I'm glad that that's what they want to do, but why does it matter? Why does it have to be Apple's own thing in order for us to have like a wireless modem in our in our uh, MacBooks? Apple and Qualcomm have a very complicated relationship, um, and they've not complicated they've, enough to use it in the phones uh, <laughs> because they have to. They Apple wants to keep selling iPhones, so they have to offer that. Whereas um, in a MacBook, they don't have to offer that in any hurry because no one's going to not buy a MacBook because it doesn't have that feature. Um, it we wouldn't destroy it doesn't destroy the the MacBook um, as a business. So no, I, but it's I just think that's probably the main reason. It's one of those features where like when it does come out in five years, if it does, we're all going to be doing that thing where we're just praising or like finally, like we're so excited, and then everyone else who's owned anything else for the last fifteen years are going to be like, "Yeah, welcome to two thousand seven. We've had this forever." But like, it's true. Like, I, and I'm just thinking this of this selfishly because, you know, and Kevin, you can attest to it. How great would it be when we're traveling? You're traveling way more than I am, and I feel like I've been gone a bunch. How great would it be to just pull up? at the airport at a coffee shop at your hotel when your hotel wi-fi is absolute just trash and be able to use 5g you know even though we just kind of dogged it for a little bit it's still better than a lot of these public networks like how great would it be to just have that on your macbook and and, and for those of you who tell me just hotspot like no i don't want to do that when i'm traveling i don't want to eat up the battery of my phone even more i don't want it to get super hot I don't want to do, I just want it to be seamless, open up the MacBook, boom, it's on its own separate network using its own separate data plan. Like yeah. that's, that's my dream, but it's just, we're five years away, which is sad. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I would even, you know me, I, I try not to have monthly payments, but that would be something I would definitely pay for 100%. Cause I, oh, yeah. I, I do, I do work mobile often, even though I have a whole setup. I do like to go to a coffee shop and work. I do like to go different areas and work it's kind of a change of pace and, <laughs> connection is always a thing you know what i mean like i i, I tether to my phone often but just, just to ha just to not to have to rely on that and, and have 5g anywhere i go i mean that 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 sounds like what the 5g was promised to us that, that sounds like the promises that 5g was three years yeah. ago when, when they when they when they painted this picture of what 5g would look like for us now i just don't tether years later i don't tether a lot it's only like in case of emergencies how much battery life does it eat for you when you're when you're tethering to it eats a significant amount of battery. Um, I okay. do tether to my son's uh, 
to my son's tablet often. Like if he needs to watch something or in the car or whatever, he wants to watch something online. I do that often, but majority of the time when I tether, I make a conscious effort to plug into something. So I'll plug into my MacBook if I'm tethering, if I'm at a coffee shop, or I'll plug in my car if I'm tethering to, 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 to mitigate the battery life loss. But it is pretty significant. And the, the device does get pretty hot when tethering as well. Yeah. You are definitely right about that. Um, yeah. And then your plan probably doesn't give you unlimited. So it's like there's a very specific amount that you can only tether for unless you want to pay for more personal hotspot yeah. data. So it's just like, you know, when I think about the, the iPad, which has cellular data available, uh, that's only like $10 a month to add on and you get unlimited. Like, why? That's, that's what I need. That's what I want in a MacBook. It would be perfect. Yeah, but I agree. Yeah, so that's what I kind of thought about when I saw 5G Advanced. They're still using the Qualcomm stuff. Hartley, what about you? Would, would you would you buy a MacBook uh, specifically? Like, it's it's a little bit extra. It's got a little bit of a, you know, it's like the MacBook Pro 5G. Would you buy that? Uh, I would not, but that's because I don't travel and work, so it doesn't really make sense okay. to me. But I also think that there is a little bit of an international angle with this because my perception is that U.S. carriers offer generally way better deals and do offer you the ability to add stuff on for ten dollars or a bit like with apple watch tethering um relatively inexpensive in the states in the uk uh, our carriers uh are ridiculous in terms of oh really charge um yeah it's like five dollars to add my apple watch <laughs> it's like uh, nothing so it's it's quite a i mean it's not it's not a, i mean per, each month it's probably like only maybe the equivalent of five dollars difference um so maybe it costs ten dollars a month to tether your apple watch but all in all that's still quite a lot um mm -hmm. when your your main phone plan is already stupidly expensive so that's also a consideration and uh i don't know how how many uh cellular ipads apple actually sells compared to wi-fi based ones i'd be really interested to know about that how many people integrate um uh, a cellular enabled device that is not their phone um, into their workflow um, unless there are unless you truly do travel for work and you use that device for work um, yeah i don't know how many people are actually doing that probably uh, it's a minority at least it's got to be yeah, yeah. i can see that um all right so i mean that's pretty much all of the good features that we have rumored out there um i don't know if all of these or any of these are really going to happen. But, I mean, these all come from pretty good sources. So expect some of these uh, to happen in, what, 10 months? So, yeah, I mean, we'll I'm sure we'll talk about the iPhone 16 again before it actually comes out. But the one last thing I want to leave on is what is one feature that you and, – and go crazy with it if you want to or be realistic. What is the one feature you want that we did not talk about on any of the iPhone 16 models? Hartley, you look you look like you're thinking. Kevin, you're yeah. looking, you want me to go first? I can go first. Yeah, you can you can you can go first. I'm I'm thinking. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think reverse charging would be the thing that I would want for the AirPods, for the watch. Flip over your phone, plop it on the back there. There are other manufacturers who've been doing this for a couple of years now. Um, I don't use those phones on a regular basis, so couldn't tell you if it is even actually useful. But I feel like with AirPods specifically, I get myself caught in that bind where I'm like, damn, I uh, I don't have battery life. And just like a couple minutes would get me through. And I don't carry lightning cables with me all the time. So like I or a USB-C cable now with the new ones, like because I only re wirelessly charge my AirPods. So, yeah, I think that would be the thing that I would want the most. I mean, we kind of have that capability now. It's just not unlocked. Right. Because it kind of does that with some of the MagSafe stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, hmm. just just let it happen, Apple. Just let it happen. Yeah. I think Anyone got for, one? Uh, yeah, I think for me, uh, it would be uh, better speakers. Because really? we got a big upgrade with speakers with the iPhone 7 when it started to use the earpiece as well. And we actually got stereo for the first time. And every couple of generations, Apple hasn't really talked about it, but there have been improvements to the speakers. But I still feel like they don't sound that great, um, especially on the smaller model. Um, I feel like... That is an area where I understand that there are restrictions with a, a chassis that is so small. Yeah. But if we're getting bigger devices, it means you can you can squeeze in a bigger speaker in there and kind of offset uh, some of my complaints. Because I, I listen to a bunch out loud. 
out of my phone um, because it's always just way more convenient. Uh, It's what I've got to hand if I want to throw a podcast on when um, uh, I'm getting ready or when I'm doing something or I'm sick of having AirPods in. It's just what I reach for because it takes takes time to get a Bluetooth speaker or it feels too big. It feels inappropriate sometimes. Uh, So, yeah, I would like better speakers, I think. What about you, Kev? yeah, I have a couple. I have a couple. Um, oh, oh, you know, a couple. Yeah, because um, you know, one of the things that that Apple is doing, where you have the, <laughs> it's like yeah. I'm out of focus. Yeah, you're out of focus. Just, this is all right. I'm, I'm just trying. What happened? I don't focus well. <laughs> no. I don't focus well often. Sorry. So that's yeah, okay. So you know how um, you know you have the standby mode with your iPhone. You put it on the stand, and it, it kind of sets up like that. Um, so it's like this, this whole desk scenario where you're sitting at a desk and then you have your, your MacBook, whatever. I love, I would love to have the option if I was doing something on my phone and just swipe up towards my MacBook and it just puts whatever I was doing on the MacBook with continuity. Right. So let's say I get an email because there's a lot of times I get an email and I say, Oh, let me look at it on my phone. And I'm like, what am I doing? Let me just look at it on my computer. I have to then open the email. I would love to just swipe up and it'll go to my computer. But screen. you can just click you can just click the little thing in the dock. I know I can, but I'm just saying just to add that fluidity and that magic that magic sauce. Like work just, with me here, Dan. You just, work with me you here. Just wanna, you just want like Yeah, you want minority like report that. and just flick it up. Yeah, okay. So that's swipe send yeah. it to the big screen. So that's so that's oh, one geez. thing I would like. I think that'd be kind of cool. Okay. Especially using the new chips yeah. to where it recognizes where devices are and stuff like that. I think that'd be Flashy. really cool. Yeah. Okay. Um I would like that and then I would love the ability uh, I would love to have generative AI built into the phone. Like I, I've like I've seen a couple of cool examples with it just recently with generative AI baked into a device. So spotlight, like next level spotlight. So for example, I could do a search and just type in Verizon flight and everything regarding my Verizon flight would just sort of pop up or tell me what do I need to know about the Verizon flight? And for example, because I'm like going on a flight with Verizon next, you know, a couple of weeks and I would love for it to just pop out and tell me what I need to know from there. And then have actionable items like, okay, would you like me to put in your calendar? Would you like to set a reminder? Would you, do you want to text your wife, tell her you're going? Like all those things yeah. like baked into the phone, make your phone simpler instead of having to go into each app to do each action. Because like when you do something, there's like several actions you have to do after you have this thing. The email comes in and you need to do this thing. And you can set reminders, but what if there's a way for it to like tell you all the things that you should do after doing it based off your actions? And that's sort of a demo I saw with like a, a chip, a chip that can that's baked in some some of these phones overseas. And I think that is extremely useful. Just kind of take your phone to the next level of being like a a personal assistant, something that predicts your next your next actions instead of you inputting everything else. Well, that might actually happen. We actually talked about this on our last episode, oh. all about iOS 18 um, and Siri getting kind of like a Chat GPT ish like capability potentially. Yeah. Um, and that 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 kind of AI could be super useful for what you were just saying. So I'm glad you brought yeah. that up because that was actually that was that was on the list and we did not bring it up because we talked about it last mm-hmm. week and I didn't want to keep going. But yeah, cool. there's going to be potentially some features dedicated to the iPhone 16 as well. So like some on device stuff there. So that would be cool. Yeah, that's better than your minority report thing. Not, we can just literally click. That's still I but, can but click the icon. I can click the is, icon. But that's one of those things that Apple does and they do this demo and it goes, it's magical. And you do that and then the yeah, crowd screams, right? So <laughs> it's magical. You're not wrong. How many times how many times during those events that we've had where people get, you know, you're I have Kevin's always sitting right next to me. Yeah. All the time. In these oh, little, oh. Throwing in these little comments. <laughs> Listen, deleting a text message, the crowd went crazy. The Yeah. The crowd like Super Bowl, Super Bowl levels, right? So <laughs> I, yeah. Uh Anyways, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, Kevin, you want to explain where everybody can find you if they don't know already? Yeah, uh, I am uh, Tech Ninja Speaks everywhere you look at things on the internet. Uh, YouTube, Kevin the Tech Ninja. Tech Ninja Speaks, uh, come right up. And uh, yeah, I make videos. Uh, not all Apple, yeah, you but do. Uh, general technology. And try to, have, yep. try, to make tech, try, to tech, try to make technology human, right? Have a conversation about technology. I do a lot of comparisons, phone comparisons and all that stuff. So um, love for you guys to pop over if you want. Go check it out. Subscribe, follow him everywhere. They're all great videos. Sure. And uh, yeah, we'll catch. Everyone. Don't, don't sell yourself short, man. They're all great. <laughs> and uh, we'll catch everybody in the next episode. 